Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima and I'm here checking out Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 4. Yeah, I actually really love Ratchet and Clank and hearing that they were making a remaster of the first game was absolutely fantastic for me. And I've played through a fair bit of the game and I recently just played a bit of it in remote play and I forgot to tell you how that all works. So, in the game controls, you've got invert camera controls and your control type. Now, I recommend keeping this on lock strafe at pretty much all times because the other control schemes make the game work in such a way like your camera doesn't face your gun. It just stays in the direction... It just stays in whatever direction it wants unless you actively tell it to move. So I'd recommend keeping it on lock strafe because that's the most comfortable way to play on Vita and pretty much in general. You can also flip L1, L2, R1 and R2. I wouldn't do that. I'd keep that on no. I don't know why it's on yes. I keep turning that off and it just won't work for some reason. And there is the auto aim option which displays a little red hexagon over what you're shooting at and it'll automatically aim towards it. I'd recommend keeping this on for remote play just because it's a lot easier. Hell, I have trouble turning that off on PlayStation 4. I am playing this on hard difficulty, so don't mind that. So away we go. Thankfully, the remake controls are actually quite simplified. The idea is that most of the stuff that you need to do, keyword being most, is on your face buttons or on the shoulder buttons. So, whoop. Almost lost the catch kit there. So, we've got the jump button is on the X button. Your typical fire button's on the circle button, but you can also use the right shoulder button. Your square button's your wrench, and if you hold triangle, you can... Oh, I didn't mean to bloody activate that animation again. God, the connection's actually having a little bit of trouble recently. I'm going to try and hold it as still as I possibly can. And you can also use the triangle button to swap whatever we weapon you're using at the time. It's pretty simple stuff, really. You've also got the L1 button, which serves as a scope for some weapons. And the ability to throw your wrench. And just, yeah, that's pretty much it. The L2 button, which is on the back here, by default, uses the jetpack, which shows up on a couple of levels. Not all of them, unfortunately, because it's... it's Kind of frustrating, because the jetpack is actually really fun to use. It's a little bit disappointing. But it's just a one-button use, so you can just hold your button, um, your finger on the back here, and it will work just fine. You've also got the R2 button, which is a dedicated long jump button. Or a high jump button, depending on how you want to use it. Contro the connection keeps getting interrupted. I don't know what's wrong with it. But yeah, the heavily simplified control scheme actually makes this pretty good to play on the Vita because there's basically nothing going on here that you can't control with the typical setup on the almost the default settings. You probably want to set the game to lock strafe basically immediately after you start playing, but other than that, fucking hell. Other than that, it should work just fine. Also, the game looks bloody gorgeous, but if it will stop freezing so I can actually get through the segment, that'd be great. And a little bit of hacking, too. The game does have a lot of, ac of different sections, too, which is a little bit disconcerting, because, you know, with more controls, there's more abilities to fuck up. Sometimes, that, that's just what happens sometimes. It's not that big of a deal. Oh dear, so I do have to activate this one. Right, there we go. That was pretty easy, actually. But yeah, so you've got a couple of other segments that you have to worry about too, and I was a little bit worried to start off with, because this game does have a lot of different segments. It has a, a hoverboarding, as a racing thing. It has spaceship sections. It has clank sections. And I went and tried all of them. Well, I didn't try the clank sections, because the clank sections aren't exactly the most difficult thing in the world, but I tried a spaceship section and I tried a hoverboarding section. And they all relied on just using the main shoulder buttons. Like, in the spaceships... Whoops. <laughs> in the spaceship sections of the game, you do have to do things like barrel rolls on L1, L2, R1, R2... On L2 and R2, I should say. And those work just fine. Like, they're, they're absolutely positively fine. Because all you need to do is like just do a random tap on the back there and you'll do a barrel roll and 
frankly, the game's not that hard to begin with, so it's really not entirely necessary to have massively quick reflexes on that. A little bit annoying they added an oxygen meter to this, honestly. I mean, Ratchet & Clank 3 didn't have an oxygen meter, but oh well. Let's grab the bolts. But yeah, uh, now that my connection seems to have stopped falling out, as soon as I say it, as soon as I flip and say it, but yeah, the game itself works perfectly fine on remote play. I went and tested as many segments as I could. I've been playing around with it and it just, it works fine. It's an absolutely fine implementation, despite the fact that it doesn't really stray too far from the... It doesn't really stray too far from the default stuff they include in the... I really wish it'd stop freezing like this. Despite the fact that it doesn't stray too far from the, um... Normal default PlayStation 4 remote play layout. They didn't really need to, and they didn't really go messing it with it, with it too much, which is, you know, worthy of applause in itself. So, the game, for the most part, and by the most part, I mean 99% of the game, should work just fine. You can fly on the jetpacks, you can do the hoverboard races. I went and got the silver cup, like, the first time I tried, so, you know, you, at least you'd be able to get used to it, right? Oh look, I actually get infinite oxygen. Who would have thought? Now I can finally breathe underwater. Oh yeah, now I can teleport back. But yeah, the whole game works just fine in room I play. Like 99.9% .9 of the time. So, I have no complaints. And it's a pretty well done remote play scheme, even if they didn't really do anything. I guess my main problem with the controls is the fact that you can't, like, map the L1 button to the jump button, so it doesn't feel as natural doing strafes and jumps as it does in, like, Ratchet & Clank 3, but that's a problem with the game itself and not really the remote play implementation, so I can't really complain about it too much here. I actually have the ability to record PlayStation 4 footage natively now. I dug out one of my old capture devices and the damn thing actually works, so I can do that. Might not do it for a while, but I can do that. So, this has been Blue Maxima. If you want to play Ratchet & Clank on remote play, you're more than capable of it. So, feel free if you're holding out on that for whatever reason. I'll see you all next time.